Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson we will talk about thermal energy and heat. So what is energy? Energy is related to the amount of movement of particles within a substance. So thermal energy is energy that the substance already has and it translates like I just said in the amount of movement that the particles have. So the warmer the substance the more energy it has and the more agitated its particles are. And that will translate into a higher temperature. But I'll get back to the temperature reading in a second. Now, the difference with heat, heat is the amount of energy that is transferred to that substance. Obviously, that heat comes from another source, another, another body, another substance. We also know that heat always flows from something warm to something that is cooler. So high energy to low energy. We can't give away something we don't have. So if I'm cold and uh, you know my hubby is warm, well, he's going to hold my hands and he's going to give me his energy, right? So always from warm to cold type of thing or cooler. Okay, so back to the... Um, thermometer. So when particles are very agitated, they'll collide with the thermometer and while doing so, they will transfer some of their energy, so heat, right, to the thermometer. And the thermometer will then gain energy and that's why these particles are going to start moving more, colliding more, and the temperature gauge is going to go up. The fluid in here will expand, take more space, and that's going to give you a higher reading. So that's how it works. Okay, so here we have a candle. So we have a source of heat. And we call it a source of heat for a reason because there is a transfer of energy between the combustion here going on. So the, this, whatever, the candle that it's burning, that is burning. Um, there's an exchange of energy, so there's heat flowing towards, let's say, the water that's in my container here. Okay, so that's called heat. As opposed to thermal energy over here, that's the energy that the water already possessed. Now, we can measure the before and after. So at the beginning, the water had a certain amount of thermal energy, let's say 10 kilojoules, and at the end, it has 50 kilojoules. So how much Heat was transferred to it, well, 40 kilojoules. 50 minus 10, obviously, gives me 40. Okay, so internal energy and energy transferred. That's the distinction between the two, but both are forms of energy. And as I explained, temperature is an indirect measurement of this transfer. Okay, so it measures essentially the speed of the particles before and after this heat was transferred to the water. So we say it's a macroscopic way. In other words, we macro means to the naked eye. It's the macro, macroscopic way of measuring a microscopic reality because we can't see the particles. They are microscopic, right? So to the naked eye, we use a thermometer to measure the amount of energy that micro, microscopic particles have. All right. Now, what are the different factors that affect how much heat is transferred? So there's multiple ones. The first one is the variation of temperature. So obviously, the more the temperature goes up or down, the more heat transfer was involved. So if we take a look at this example, this thermometer is, has a lower temperature. This one has a higher temperature. So this one would have less of a heat transfer, this one would give a reading for a higher energy transfer, so higher heat. Okay, so the more heat transferred, the higher the variation of temperature from beginning to end of the experiment. The second one is the mass. So the greater the number of particles, that means more mass, right? The greater the amount of energy involved in the transfer. The greater the mass, the longer it will take for the heat to heat up the whole substance, and the greater the mass, the more heat can be absorbed or stored. So what do I mean by all of this? Let's say each particle represents is represented here by a box. So if I'm using, hold on, let me just grab my pen. Okay, so we have energy over here. Let's say we have a source of energy. So Energy is transferred to my first particle or from my first box, second box, 
third box, and goes on and on and on. So the more particles or the more boxes I have, the longer it takes to fill them up, right? But also the more energy can be stored in total. So the greater the number of particles or boxes in my example, the greater the amount of energy involved. Yes, more boxes, more energy. The greater the mass, or in my example, the more boxes, the longer it'll take to heat up the substance. It's much longer to put energy in all these boxes. If I had less boxes, it will take less long, less time to fill them all up. So the greater the mass, the longer it'll take to heat it up, heat up the substance. And the greater the mass, the more heat can be absorbed or stored. So at the end of the, of, of the experiment, let's say, once I'm done putting energy in all of these boxes, I have stored a lot of energy if I have a lot of boxes. Okay, so that's the way it works for the mass. So first, the change of temperature is a, a factor, and then the mass is a factor. The last one is the type of substance we're dealing with. So this is related to the specific heat capacity. So there is a certain measurement that is linked to the uh, type of substance we're looking at, which essentially tells us that the amount of energy needed to warm up the substance is specific to that substance. So the real definition is the amount of thermal energy required to raise one gram of substance by one degree Celsius. So it's measured in joules because it's a form of energy per gram per degree Celsius. Now let me clarify this with an example again. We are comparing here water and sand. So the size of the box, let me just get my... Okay, so the size of the box represents the value of the specific heat capacity. So this one, water, has a higher specific heat capacity than sand. So to raise, so this represents one gram of sand, one gram of water. To warm up one gram of sand, I'll need, let's say, one joule. To warm up one gram of water by one degree Celsius, I'll need a little bit over four joules. Now, in this example, you see two things. It takes less energy for sand than for water, but also it took more time to fill up my water box than to fill up my sand box with energy. Okay, so the lower the value, the faster the temperature will rise and the less energy it takes to, to raise the temperature. For a bigger value, well, it takes more energy to increase the temperature of that substance and also takes more time to increase the temperature of that substance. And to cool it off, it's the same idea. If I want to cool off water, it's going to take more time to cool off one gram of water than to cool off one gram of sand. So this heats up and cools off faster. This heats up and cools off more slowly, but it contains more energy than sand. Okay, so takes longer, but also contains more energy. This warms up, cools off faster, but doesn't require as much energy. Okay, so the greater the specific heat capacity, the longer it'll take for the temperature to increase, but it also stores more heat. Now, there is a value that you need to um, know by heart. This is a little bit like knowing that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius. It's just a basic uh, point of knowledge. So the specific heat capacity of water is 4.19 joule per gram degree Celsius. So you should know this value by heart. Now, I had a follow-up question, but I've already addressed this. Which substance would cool off faster, water or sand, and why? We just said it's sand because the value of the specific heat capacity is smaller. And smaller means it heats up faster, it cools off faster, okay? Because it contains less energy. It's easier to give away that energy at the end of the day. Now, knowing this, we know that all these factors uh, influence how much heat can be transferred. What do we do with this? So we can calculate actually the amount of energy or heat, I should say, transferred. If we multiply the mass, the specific heat capacity, and 
the variation of temperature. By multiplying these three factors, we actually get the total amount of energy transferred in or out of a substance. Okay, so we've determined already that heat is measured in joules. The mass is in grams, specific heat capacity is in joule per gram degree Celsius, and the temperature variation is in Celsius. We can break it down into final temperature minus initial temperature. Now, depending on if the substance is gaining energy, we'll say it's endothermic and the value should be positive. If the energy is released by the substance, it's exothermic and the value should be negative. Okay, so here you have the general equation, but if you break it down for delta T into final minus initial, you can also use this version.